Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to look at tripod shots with one or a few trackers and a new workflow for them in Synthize 1809 and later. Here we've got a big pan where there are many possible trackers, but the shots that we're concerned about are ones that typically arise when an actor or a vehicle moves in front of the camera and you wind up having to track some little feature off in a corner of the image for a little while, something like that. So you wind up with only a, a single tracker in all or part of the shot. You might switch back and forth between having a couple of trackers in some parts of the shot and only one in some other parts of the shot. Now to show you how that goes, I've set that up here with a couple of supervised trackers already. And you can see that you know, we start out with four of them that are valid, and then in these pink sections, it's dropped down to only a single one. I'll point out that in some circumstances, you might need to hand off from one single tracker to another single tracker. When you do that, they need to overlap by a single frame, at least, in order to do that successfully. If one ends on frame five and the next one starts on frame six, there's no way to tell what happened between five and six, and you won't be able to cross that gap. So there always needs to be an overlap. Now let's go back to the solver panel. And in shots like this, where there are a limited number of trackers, you almost always want to be working from the known lens mode. If we had a full set of trackers here, then we'd have enough information to figure out what that lens field of view is. But with just a couple of trackers, you generally don't. We want to go with a known setting here, and then we want to enter whatever our best estimate is for that field of view based on some other shots, typically. So we'll just put that in. And also with these low information sorts of shots, it's a good idea to take this tripod fuzz value and set that down to zero. Now, the fundamental issue with these shots when there's only a single valid tracker during part of the shot is that that doesn't determine the roll angle, the Dutch angle of the camera during that time. The camera could spin around that single tracker and you can't tell the difference. Normally, synthize won't solve frames like that at all. As a workaround, people would clone that tracker. In addition to being a pain to keep the clone up to date with the original one, because you'd have to delete it and recreate it, more significantly, the approach would cause glitches at the beginning and end of the section with a single tracker. Here's a screen capture of what that looks like. I'd set this up earlier and, and, and solved it in that other method. And you can see that here are the sections where the roll angle is constant because there's only a single tracker there and there. At the beginning and end of the single tracker section, you get these glitches in the roll velocity. What's going on is that the, mid, the roll angle in the middle is staying fixed, but as it synthesizes optimizing the overall path, the roll angle is changing, you know, perhaps just by a little bit, right on the frame before and after each of these sections. So they're kind of drifting slowly away as they get optimized. There's nothing that we're telling it to keep it the same to maintain any kind of continuity with the single tracker section. Now the right solution to this is to add a roll constraint to replace the missing information that you would normally get by having additional trackers. In Synthize 1809 and later, that gets done automatically. When Synthize sees a shot like this, where there's some single tracker sections, it clones the necessary trackers behind the scenes. So you never even see the clones at all. They're, they're there only during the solve. It also creates a roll lock, again, behind the scenes, temporarily during the solve. 
So that roll lock is effective even when the constraint checkbox up here is off, unlike the regular solver lock constraints. Now, if you do have a shot that has changing Dutch angles, this approach won't work because we're, we're setting the roll angle to zero. But you're already in trouble because you've only got one tracker in, in some of the sections. So you're, you're not going to have any way of telling what's happening there then anyway. So let's go and run the solve here. Now we'll just see it goes and, and does all this. So there's some messages up at the top about what it's done, that it's created that roll angle constraint, and you get, you get the solve here. And we can go over to the graph editor and we'll pop down to the actual values. And you can see, bang, they're exactly zero for the entire time while the other angles are busily changing around to keep everything lined up. So it's, it's done what you need to right away. And we can go and, just for illustration, add in, say, a cylinder. And with that roll constraint in place, you know, a cylinder, you know, whatever you're going to add into the scene is going to stay nice and vertical throughout the at length of the shot. So to recap the advantages of this workflow, they are that you don't have to clone the trackers, you don't have to create a roll constraint, there aren't any glitches, and also there's no drift in the roll and no jitter in the roll. And those latter two can happen just because there are so few trackers in the other spots even when we only have two or three trackers. So this is an easy and reliable workflow. If you do need to do something special with the Dutch angles, then you can just clone your trackers like before, which will disable the automatic roll constraint. Then you can animate your own very special roll constraint on up. But really, it's better off to see if you can't find some additional trackers. Thanks for watching.